In our previous class, we had seen how to run or schedule a ESS job with the help of integration wherein we had made use of ERP integration service in order to run or schedule a ESS job and then we had waited for couple of seconds or minutes to wait until that ESS job completes the run and then we check the status and then we continued ahead with the business process. In this class, we will learn similar use case wherein we run or schedule a ESS job but here we won't wait until the ESS job completes rather we will just submit a request to run a ESS job then once the ESS job completes in Fusion it will raise an event and our integration will subscribe to the event raised by Fusion for that particular ESS job and then we will go ahead with our business use case. So in this approach we need to create two integration one integration will submit a request to run ESS job and another is a callback integration which will subscribe to the event raised by fusion on completion of that ESS job. For demonstration purpose I am going to make use of this custom ESS job which we had created in our previous class also this is the same ESS job which we had used to run in our previous class in method one approach with the help of integration. In this class also we will demonstrate the use case by scheduling the same ESS job which will have one parameter to be sent at runtime. Now let me walk you through the first integration which will schedule or raise a request to run ESS job. This is a simple integration which will make use of Oracle ERP cloud adapter over here. So the prerequisite is you need to have this Oracle ERP cloud connection created prior to building this integration. So first thing is I have created couple of integration parameters over here or the properties to store the job definition name and the package name. Package name is nothing but the path what we see over here. Since it is a custom we are appending seeded ESS job path with the path over here. Since I given the same path over here which is nothing but the seeded ESS job path I am repeating twice here. Already I have discussed in detail in my previous class on this topic. Please check out that video if you are having any doubts. Job definition name it is nothing but it is this name of the ESS job. So this I am trying to hold in this properties because at any time if there is a change in the name or something else we can come over here and modify. Next thing is we have to consume or invoke this ERP cloud adapter. Let me open the wizard. Name the invocation accordingly. Here we have to select query create update or delete information. That is from the list of operations under what would you like to do with Oracle ERP cloud adapter. Click on next. Here we have to select browse by services. Under that we have to select a service that is ERP integration service. Under that we have to select the operation that is export bulk data. Click on next. In response we have to select no response as we don't want the response to be sent back to fusion. Click on close. Let me open the mapper. Here in the job name we need to send job package name that is nothing but the path comma and the definition name. At runtime it will look something like this path comma and the job definition name that we are concatenating it over here. Next is the parameter list since we are having one parameter that is this BIP or the ESS job accepts site use code that we are sending it over here. We are hard coding it to build to but in real case it will accept build to ship to another site use codes. Under job option we are giving enable event as Y because we have created one more integration that is a callback integration which will subscribe to the ERP outbound events raised by Fusion. For that we have to select this as Y. Notification code I have made it as 30. For more details you can check our previous blog on this that is how to export bulk data from Oracle Fusion Cloud ERP with OIC integration. Here if you scroll down I have provided notification mode mapping details. So in our case it is 3.0 it means 3 stands for email and bell notification 0 means send in any case that is success or failure. We can use any combination from this list. I am closing the mapper now. That's it with this integration. Once this integration submits a ESS job scheduling request, it will complete the process in Fusion and it will make a call to this callback integration. Let me open this callback integration now. So the trigger over here is the Oracle ERP cloud adapter. Let me open the wizard. Name this trigger connection accordingly. I have given as trigger. Click on next. 
here we have to select the purpose for this trigger i am selecting receive business events raised within erp cloud that is from the list of options available at the time of configuration and then i have made use of the filters so all the details you can check from this erp cloud adapter connection so i am going to make use of this filter expression so in the filter what i am trying to do is i am trying to get only those events whose job name is test get site use code report this is the same what we have in ess job so this integration will receive the callback request only for those ess job completion or the raised events for other ess job events it won't subscribe to click on next click on next response type is null and close so once this integration receives the event for this particular ess job completion the next thing is we have to extract the files so as this ess job will invoke a bip report it will generate a bip report and it will burst the report into ftp server already i have covered in detail in our previous classes please check out the class for more details suppose if your ess job is just extracting the data then we can go ahead with this download extract that is again this invocation makes use of oracle erp cloud adapter name the adapter accordingly click on next here we have to select query create update or delete information and in the operation we have to select browse by services service is erp integration service and operation is get document for document id this will pull the document generated by that ess job from the ucm server click on next and close let me open the mapper this get document by document id is accepting the document id in the request so in the trigger request what we see over here we will receive the document id this document id is nothing but all the documents which are part of that particular ess job will be uploaded to ucm and the document id will be a reference for that file in the ucm server so same thing we are passing it over here next thing is we are writing that file to ftp server so you can send it over email you can archive it to object storage in oracle cloud you can do n number of operations with the file so in this ftp adapter we are going to make use of this operation that is write file mode is ascii this you can configure as per your need here xml schema document i am selecting this as a opaque schema because the response of that get document by document id returns the binary response that is in base 64 click on next and close if you don't know how the opaque schema looks like it is something like this this is the opaque schema let me open the mapper for this write file operation click on view So here in the opaque element i am passing the response from get document by document id this is the response how it looks so the content will be in base 64 that i am passing it over here and the outbound ftp header type we are sending in file name we are sending the document name and in the directory i am giving the path where the file has to be written in ftp server let me close this mapper close the integration now we will test this integration so before testing let me make sure if there are any files in the ftp server as this ess job is going to invoke a bip report and that bip report is going to be busted into the ftp server so this is the location where our ess job will burst the file as of now there are no files also this is the same location where our extract from that ucm server will be downloaded i am submitting the ad hoc request since this is the scheduled integration click on submit now this is the instance which is created it has triggered just now let us go to fusion and refresh over here it is showing as get site use code report ess job has succeeded let me click on this in order to get the details let me check the parameter what has been sent and the parameter is bill underscore 2 let me check what is the process id for that job click on this receive message from run report that is 1802393 let's verify from here it is 1802393 this is the same ess job which has invoked by this submit ess job method to integration now we will go to callback integration that is this one our callback integration was also called successfully just now if you see it over here five seconds ago let me open this or view the activity stream let me check the receive response here if you see the ess job process id is 1802393 that is the same one that is 1802393 and it has succeeded successfully and also the ucm server 
ESS job has also completed successfully. This is nothing but it will upload the ESS job files to this UCM server. Now this has completed successfully. Also we will check whether it has written the file from UCM server to the FTP server. It has completed successfully. Now let's go to FTP server and refresh. So this is the file which is generated by BIP report by busting and this is the file which is extracted from UCM server and it has returned to FTP server. Now let's download and open this file. First file over here is the log file. If you see it will have all the details of that ESS job run request. Second is the BIP report generated as this BIP report is generating a file with the help of busting to FTP. This is of no use for us. And the last is the XML extract from that ESS job run. All those files we will get when we extract that from UCM server with the help of this callback integration and within that by using this get document by document ID. Suppose if your BIP report generates a huge file like more than a 10 MB or 20 MB then it is advisable we don't pull the UCM server files because it can create an issue as it is responding in base64 format and at the time of writing that file to FTP it might throw an error if it exceeds 10 MB. So ideal approach is we just subscribe to that event and check the status and carry out with other activities like we can read the file from that FTP server what has got busted by BIP. This could be used for other use cases like to run the seeded ESS jobs as well.